Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Oliver's for the Holy Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper. This wonderful liturgy signals the end of the season of Lent and begins the Paschal Triduum. After the procession through the church, the Blessed Sacrament will be reposed in the Family Center until 2 a.m. Our presider this evening is our pastor, Father Syriac. Please rise. Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We begin the Paschal Triduum tonight, the three-day remembrance of the Passion, crucifixion, death, and resurrection of the Lord. We remember how Jesus' life on earth ended in triumph disguised as defeat. Everything that he had done has led to this point. Tonight, we hear of the account of the first Eucharist, the source and summit of our faith. Tonight, we hear of Jesus giving his disciples a model for us all to follow through our service to our neighbor. Please be seated. Where are yet? We are gathered together on this holy night to begin the Easter Triduum. United with the church throughout the world, we commemorate the suffering, death, resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier this week, Archbishop Hartmeyer, united with his auxiliary bishops, Joel, John, and Ned, consecrated the Holy Chrism 
and bless the oils. Tonight, we receive the sacred prism and the holy oils, which we will use in celebration of the sacraments. By means of these powerful symbols, the risen Savior will continue in our midst the works he began at his death and resurrection, forgiveness, healing, and new life. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body, mind, and soul. catechumens through the anointing with this oil may our catechumens who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms Chrism. Through the anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. To prepare ourselves for the sacred mysteries, the greatest <laughs> gift that Jesus has given us, the gift of the Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. I confess, Lord, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece, for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and sh shall share it in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood 
and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh and unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins grid, girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destruction blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, with all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what he also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in, this, in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware of the fa that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again. He said to them, 
Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that what I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello. He's trying to hide my homily so that I won't preach, I guess. Eh? <clears throat> I've been thinking this week about what I would have done if I were Jesus at the Last Supper. In remembrance of, uh, you know, the Last Supper, Jesus is the Lamb of God, so Father Ron has been asking for I want to have lamb chap for, for dinner, you know, lamb chap. Okay, lamb, you got it at lunchtime now. Um, so I would have looked around the table at my 12 best friends in the world, the men who had been with me for the last three years, the men that I taught the most to, the men who knew me the best, the men who were closest to me. Among them were Judas, who betrayed me, Peter, who would deny knowing me three times, Thomas, who would doubt the resurrection, and the rest of them who would um, desert me after the crucifixion. I think I would have called over the waiter and told him, separate check, please. <laughs> I'm out of here right after dinner. I mean, this is not working out at all. If I cannot count on my best friends, whom, whom can I count on? But Jesus did not and does not do that. He washes their feet for giving it all. He gives them the greatest gift of the Eucharist. He dies on the cross for the forgiveness of their sins and our sins. Taking part in this liturgy tonight, we find ourselves at table with the Lord and His apostles. During that meal celebrated at Passover, the Lord and His apostles commemorate and in a sense relive the sacrifice of the Passover lamb by whose blood the people of Israel were delivered from the slavery of Egypt so as to begin their journey towards the promised land. Many times before, Jesus had commemorated this epic event, but this night would be different. Jesus sits at table as the true Passover lamb, indeed the, the lamb of God who would soon lay down his life on the cross, thus revealing the mystery of the Father and his love for you and I. The bread which Jesus hands to his chosen ones is in fact his body, which he would offer on the cross for the salvation of the world. The cup from which Jesus gives his apostles to drink is in fact his blood, which from the cross he would shed for the forgiveness of sins. In his great love, Jesus desired that we, his people, would share in these saving events. Do this in memory of me, says Jesus. For that reason, Jesus established the Eucharist, just as Moses oversaw the institution of the Passover feast as an enduring 
memorial of God's miraculous deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt, so too Jesus instituted the Eucharist as a perpetual memorial of the decisive deliverance he would accomplish by his cross and resurrection. Deliverance from the slavery of sin and from the fear of death, safe passage through this earthly valley of tears to the everlasting halls of heaven. In a most mysterious and wonderful way, the Eucharist represents, re-enacts, and encapsulates the paschal sacrifice of our Savior, thus enabling us to pass from sin to grace and from grace to glory. Moreover, at the Last Supper, Jesus also instituted the holy priesthood by which the apostles and their successors would be enabled to celebrate the banquet of his sacrifice, the Mass, until the end of time. Celebrating the origin of the Eucharist and the priesthood, it is right that we should give God thanks and praise. In our first reading from uh, you know, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he, he takes us to the heart of the Eucharist. The bread we bless and break is the body of the Lord given for our salvation. The cup of wine we bless is the new covenant in the Lord's blood. St. Paul teaches us that when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord. In other words, we bear witness that by dying, Jesus has saved us and that we share in Jesus' death through the Eucharist. This is the immense gift given to us by Christ on that first Holy Thursday night. What this means is that none of us can remain indifferent to the Eucharist. The Eucharist, the celebration of the Holy Mass, it's not merely a nice ritual, something we can take part in when we feel like it or when we feel the need for it. Rather, it is utterly fundamental to our lives as Catholic Christians. The Eucharist is in fact Christ's own way of perpetuating his presence among us so as to form us a community of disciples as a holy people, precious in God's sight. The Eucharist is also the Lord's own way of entering into our hearts individually, there to shape and form us as His disciples. Sharing in the Lord's own life and love is meant to shape how we live and love. Sharing the Lord's body and blood is meant to impart to us a newfound charity and clarity in our relationship with God and our neighbor. First, the Eucharist should lead us to a new heights of charity. Moments from now, I will reenact that, that scene from the Last Supper when Christ knelt before his apostles to wash their feet. On Jesus' part, this was a gesture of humility and hospitality that Jesus performed this service on the, on the same night he instituted the Eucharist says something very important about what it means for us to take part in the Eucharist. It means that just as Jesus laid down his life for us, so too we are to love one another, to serve one another's needs, to put ourselves at the disposal of others, Jesus is the gold standard of love. Love one another, he says, as I have loved you, the mandatum, the command of the Lord. If in the Eucharist we share in the immensity of the Lord's redeeming love, he who died for us while we were yet sinners, the innocent for the guilty, then should our lives not reflect that love, especially for the poor and vulnerable, What's more, the Lord's example of washing His disciples' feet shows us that our love for others should be hands-on, direct, and personal.
personal. Secondly, the Eucharist should lead you and me to a newfound moral clarity. Attentively and worthily receiving the crucified and risen Lord in the Eucharist, our lives should reflect ever more deeply something of the Lord's own utter goodness. As the glory of the Lord's self-giving self love lights up our minds and hearts, we should perceive with increasing clarity our duty to practice and hand on the faith that we have received. Receiving the Eucharist should transform how we think, what decisions we make, and especially how we treat one another, the poor, the vulnerable, and the defenseless among us. Just as the Lord rescued us when we were powerless to save ourselves, so too, once we share in the Lord's victory of love, we should show the compassion to those who are most defenseless, those who have no one to speak for them but us. St. Paul urges us to examine our conscience carefully before we receive the Eucharist, lest we eat and drink a judgment against ourselves unless we take for granted the fathomless gift of the most holy Eucharist. Come now, let us hasten to take part in the Lord's Supper, and then let's spend time with the Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane by adoring the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament at the conclusion of our liturgy at the Family Center. Thus will we allow the depth of our Savior's love to dawn upon our hearts. May God bless us and keep us always in his love. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight, we follow the command of Jesus to wash each other's feet. The first Eucharist was more than a simple meal. It was a sign of sharing in the sacrifice that Jesus would offer. Part of that sacrifice was that all who shared at the table would wash one another's feet. To be people of the Eucharist, is to be people willing to bend down in humble service to all.
please rise. Let us now present before our loving God our prayers and our petitions. For the body of Christ that is the church, that the Eucharist may strengthen and nourish us in our mission to follow the model Jesus gave us at the Last Supper. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, that they may remain aware that they were elected to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who minister to those who are sick, injured, or dying. For those who work in emergency care, hospitals, nursing home, and hospice care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our entire parish community, and in a special way, those who will be welcomed into the church on Easter, that we may be reminded, remain renewed in the spirit as we celebrate the Paschal Triduum. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of those listed in our book of prayer for the sick, may God in his infinite mercy heal them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, the innocent victims of abortion, all those listed in our book of the deceased, May they experience eternal peace in the kingdom of God, and especially for all priests and deacons for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the new and eternal covenant, you so loved the world you created that you gave your only Son to live for us, to die for us, and to guide us to you. Inspire us to serve one another, following the model of your Son, as you respond to our needs through the same Christ who is our Lord and Passover forever and ever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat, this, eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without the end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, John, our Bishop, Joel, John, and Neri, auxiliaries, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal, living, and true God. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and he come in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, 
Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through the merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protect, protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from the eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh, oh God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be, be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, 
and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now together as a community of God, we pray that very special prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with you, we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's cherish each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under my roof, roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
after the communion prayer without the blessing, um, we will be living in silence. So uh, the blessed sacrament will be brought to the family center. It will be transferred to the family center and there we will spend in time for prayer and uh, silent prayer and adoration until 2 a.m. until 2 a.m. Um, those of you who would like to stay, um, as long as you want to stay, please stay and enter into the sacredness of this night as we prepare ourselves for the uh, passion and the de death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So um, invite you all to follow the Follow the Blessed Sacrament all the way to the family center immediately after the final prayer. Please rise. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 